firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. morning to you all. It's so lovely to see you all. A very, very happy Easter. And can I say, well done, you early risers, uh, for being here on time with the clocks going forward. It is so good to see you. Um, just before we start, let's just see. Put your hand up if you have eaten any chocolate at all this morning so far. Just put your hand up if you've eaten chocolate this morning. Yeah, the younger people have got their hands up. Not many adults. There we go. Uh, would you all like to stand? Let's stand. It's so good to see you. And as we uh, stand, we're not just early risers, uh, but we're here because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And the words are going to come up uh, on the screen, apart from the screen has just broken, uh, but that is fine. Uh, 
going to say to you, oh, hallelujah, Christ is risen. And then you're going to say, he is risen indeed. There we go. It's come up. Good. Right, let's try it properly, shall we? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Now, our first song is a great reminder of why today, whatever's going on in our lives, why today is a happy day because Jesus Christ uh, is risen from the dead. So I wonder if the children might come to the front uh, and join in the actions. Emma's going to come and lead us in the actions. And as uh, they do that, as people come to the front, uh, let me pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we remember that you have risen from the tomb that first Easter Sunday, that you are alive today. And just like you greeted those first disciples on that first Easter Sunday, we pray that by the power of your spirit, that we would know you greeting each one of us today. For your glory we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing.
thank you that you have risen from the grave. We praise your name today, this Easter. Amen. Would you like to take a seat, everybody? So great to have you here. I'm Emma, the children's pastor. And now it's time to, for children to go to their groups. So if you have a child who's 18 months or two years old, please bring them upstairs this side. If your child is three to four years old, please bring them upstairs this side. And if your child is in school year's reception to year one, if you head through to the kitchen down there, through past the kitchen. And if your child is in year two to year five at school, if you head back to the family hub, and if you're at youth, which is year six above, please head to the cross outside the back. And why doesn't everybody else say hello to the people around them?
Jesus, thank you that we can stand here in your power. And we praise you as the one who up from the grave rose again. That you, Jesus, stand in victory. And as in the words of the collect for today, Jesus, we praise you. For you have broken the chains of death and hell. And we ask that you fill your church with faith and with hope. For a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open in you, our Saviour. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you like to take a seat? And Matt Pacente is going to come and continue to lead us in prayer as we sit. Let's pray. Morning. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we worship you and adore you this morning because you have taken on our guilt and our shame and our punishment, Lord. You have borne the cost that we could not bear. And you have given us your righteousness. You've given us your perfect record, Lord. So we bless you and honor you and adore you. We thank you that you have risen, Lord, that you are alive And we thank you that you are reigning. And because you're reigning, Lord, we come to you with our requests. Because we know that you hear us and you delight in us bringing them to you. So we cry out, Lord, for this world. It's so easy to look around and see all that is broken because of the sin. Lord, and we think especially and easily of Ukraine and Israel and Palestine and the wars that ravage those places, we pray for those who are victims, Lord, for those who are suffering. We pray for those who are seeking peace. Would you be with the peacemakers, Lord? We thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And we cry out to you for wholeness, for reconciliation, for shalom that only you can provide, Lord. We pray that you'd be with your church and those who know you and are known by you in those places, that you would use them mightily by the power of your spirit to bring the true message of hope and peace and reconciliation. And Lord, closer to home, we pray for the royal family. We thank you for them. We pray for the king. We pray for the princess of Wales. 
that you would comfort them, that you would heal them, that you would strengthen them, Lord, that you would surround them with your favor. And we pray for this city, for those who are suffering, Lord, in so many ways, for the poor, for the sick and the dying, for those who are victims of violence, Lord, or threatened by violence, for the lonely and those despairing of life. We ask that you would comfort them by your Holy Spirit, that you would bring your healing, that you would bring your hope, Lord. And we pray for ourselves that we would seek to serve you, Lord, in this community, in this place, and reach out to those in need, and that we would not do so in our own strength, but do so knowing that you are the one who heals. Lord, I ask that you would give each one of us an overwhelming sense of your presence and of your spirit power in our lives, that we would know the great gift that we have in you and have that abundant life, certainly in the life to come, but in the here and now as well as you promised, Lord. And so I pray that we would abide in you, that you would be the vine and that we would remain in you and bear much fruit for your glory here in this part of London and wherever we go. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome again to you all and a very, very happy Easter. If you've joined us since the start of the service, it is lovely to have you with us, and particularly if you're a visitor here. Um, it is great to have you with us here at HDC. If you are new uh, to HDC, we would like to find out more. Um, probably the easiest thing you can do is get your phone out and get the, go to the, um, the camera mode, scan the QR code uh, on the back of the chair in front of you, and if you fill in the little form that's I'm new there, then we will get in touch with you and let you know a few things that you might be interested in. And two things uh, you may be particularly interested in are two courses uh, that we're running starting up soon after Easter. The first one is the bereavement journey course. Um, so if uh, that is you, if you have suffered a bereavement recently or even a while ago and are still, as it were, dealing uh, with processing that loss and the grief of that, uh, you would be so welcome to come along to the bereavement journey course. It's six Tuesday evenings uh, starting on Tuesday the 30th of April uh, and it's got a seventh week with a sort of an optional seventh week uh, which gives, like, if you like, the Christian perspective on grief and suffering. So that's bereavement journey course. Uh, the second course starting soon after Easter is Alpha. That starts a week earlier on the 23rd of April. And that is a seven-week course uh, looking at the big questions of life, the claims of Christianity. Uh, we've got a morning course uh, at 10 a.m. And then the evening course, which is sort of the main course starting at 7.30 p.m. The main one, there'll probably be 50, 60, 70 people at that evening course. And we would so love to see you at, at that. Um, you'll see details uh, about Alpha uh, on the card uh, on your seat. Uh, it should be somewhere around you. Um, so uh, that's got details there of that, and you can find more on the website. Um, but on the other side of this card as well, you'll see details inviting you to our next Tri Church Sunday, uh, which is on the 14th of April, so a fortnight after today, uh, when as well as uh, all the services I'll be speaking at, there'll also be food and excitement uh, after each one of the services as well. Final thing I just wanted to remind you in this net notices section is if you are planning on coming to our church weekend away, which is at the end of June, the 28th to the 30th of June, uh, we're taking over the Devere Beaumont Hotel in Windsor. Uh, around 370, 380 people are already booked on. Uh, but if you haven't yet booked on, uh, can I encourage you, you need to book on by midnight today if you want to benefit from the installment ticket. So rather than having to pay the whole price in one go, if you want to stagger it out over four months, uh, the next four months, uh, you do need to book by midnight tonight. So can I encourage you to do that? It's going to be a fantastic weekend. We've got great uh, speakers at the weekend. Uh, there are fiery entertainments of all so sorts. And as an added incentive uh, to booking on by midnight, uh, one person who has booked on by midnight today uh, could win our one golden ticket and get their church weekend away ticket totally free. Uh, so please do book on if you possibly can. So for Church Weekend Away bookings, for Alpha uh, Bereavement Journey course, for all that, if you use the QR code on the seat in front of you, you will find uh, links to uh, each one of those if you want to book on for those. Now on this um, Easter Sunday, we want to take a moment to share the peace together, knowing that Jesus, as he died on the cross, didn't just win peace uh, between us and God, but actually enables us to have peace with each other as well. So if you're able to, would you like to stand as we share the peace together? 
The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and he said, peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia indeed. Why not uh, share a sign of peace with those around you? Let's take a moment or two to do that. Would you like to take a seat? Now, before Jamie uh, Mulvaney, one of our associate ministers, before he comes uh, to uh, speak uh, to us this morning, uh, we are going to have our Bible reading. And Joyce, uh, where is Joyce? Definitely. Ah, there you are, Joyce. Well done. Thank you so much. Joyce is going to come and bring us our Bible reading. Um, If you are sitting there, you can either use the QR code, and that will take you uh, to the Bible reading, or if you're near a pillar or a window, uh, do grab a Bible, pass those around, and turn to page 1061. Uh, So Luke chapter 24, um, verses 13 to 35. Um, So grab a Bible if you'd like to, um, or use the QR code, or indeed it will come up on the screen uh, in a moment. But Joyce, thank you so much for reading. Chapter 24, verse 13. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Amos, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them called Cleopas asked him, are you the one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more... It is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they had but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going to Jesus, 
As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what has happened on the way. And how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Joyce, thank you so much. And happy Easter, everybody. Um, wonderful uh, to see you this morning. And uh, Easter, what is Easter about? Easter is about uh, the Easter bunny. It's about Easter eggs. It's about lots of chocolate. It's about family and friends. It's about uh, little chicks and gambling lambs and daffodils and lilies and uh, all of these things. But more, of, more than all of those things, Easter is about Jesus himself. Jesus himself. Today I want to speak about Jesus himself. Uh, today we've just heard that Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Who? These, these largely uh, anonymous figures. Uh, we hear that one of them is called uh, Cleopas. We don't know the other person's name. But it's the day of the resurrection. And Jesus has risen from the grave and we know that it's Easter Sunday. And why do we know that it's Easter Sunday? Uh, because they're on the road. Everyone is traveling, everyone is on the road, just as they are uh, here in the UK. I wonder, how are you traveling at the moment? What is the road of your life like this morning? Perhaps your life is full of joy and the road ahead is clear and there's not much traffic, uh, there's no junction closures on the M4 of your life uh, today. Or perhaps you're stuck and the way forward isn't clear, disappointed, disillusioned, depressed and downcast, just like these people traveling on the road to Emmaus. Or whoever we are, however we're traveling today, the hope of Easter is Jesus himself. Jesus himself. And Jesus himself is the center of history. Did you see this um, last month? This caught the attention of uh, Graham Norton, uh, that the city of Edinburgh Council has installed a barricade after Satnav's repeatedly sent cars crashing down some, some new steps uh, that had been put in. Now, don't worry, you can see there's a car there, but it's not like a van would try this. Oh, um, okay, at least not a lorry. A lorry wouldn't try to do that. Each of them uh, had to cross a cycle lane of pavement, and then they had to try to go down some steps. A delivery driver said this, I was just following the sat-nav. Uh, the council's transport and environment committee acknowledged issues with vehic vehicular interaction with the steps uh, had not been raised when road change plans were approved in 2021. Scott Arthur, the city's transport convener, had urged motorists to use their common sense. And he added somewhat helpfully, cars and trucks don't go down steps. Now these two people, uh, Luke tells us, they're on the road. And uh, they don't have Google Maps, uh, but they know where they're going. They're on the road to Emmaus. But even so, they do seem a little lost. Not lost in directions, but lost in life. In verse 17, we read that they stood still, their faces downcast. And as Jesus himself, as Jesus comes alongside them, they don't recognize him. 
And Jesus asked them, he asked them what they're talking about. And they say that they're talking about Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus himself is right there, but they don't recognize him. And they say in verse 19, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And handed, he was handed over to be crucified. And they say in verse 21, but we had hoped, we had hoped that he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. We had hoped to drive us this way, but there were some steps. We had hoped. I wonder what it is that you have been hoping in. And these people, they've been uh, hoping in Jesus Christ. And they didn't understand what had happened that first Easter weekend. Verse 25, he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And Jesus is saying, I'm not just a prophet. I'm not just a prophet like you're saying here. You know, I've actually fulfilled 300 prophecies uh, from the Old Testament. Earlier in Luke, um, Luke writes that Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus did, did not accidentally go to the cross. He didn't drift into it. He didn't get waylaid. He wasn't rerouted. He didn't stumble down some steps. He wasn't di diverted. Jesus knew exactly where he was going. He was a man on a mission. And his mission was indeed to redeem people, redeem them from their sins. But all the ways that we go off course, all the ways that we go crashing down steps ourselves. He says that the Messiah had to suffer these things and then enter his glory. More than a prophet, Jesus is the savior of the world. And what does a prophet do? A prophet points the way. A prophet points the way. But Jesus points to himself. That he's not just a sat nav, that he's the destination. That Jesus himself, Jesus says that he is the center of history. That it's all been leading to this point, that the cross and the resurrection is the culmination of history. And it's the culmination of your hopes and your dreams. But the resurrection is not just an historical event. Jesus himself, Jesus himself is risen from the grave. There is the, the risen Jesus with them, uh, having very human interactions, walking, eating, getting tired. And if you jump forward to the, the end of our passage, the, the two people here, they, they race back to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and those with them and they said, it is true, the Lord has risen. It is true, it is true. Jesus is risen from the grave. And maybe like these uh, people this morning, initially you're finding it difficult, difficult to believe. It seems far-fetched. Well, if that's you this morning, can I encourage you this term to come and explore the evidence on Alpha and see how everything in Scripture points to this moment, points to Jesus Christ and how we can be confident that it's reliable. So we too, we too can say it is true. The Lord has risen. And if uh, Jesus himself is risen from the grave, then the clocks go forward today. The clocks go forward today, not just a British summertime, but the clocks go forward today to the end of time when you and I can know resurrection life and each of us will die one day, but that only needs to be a gateway, a gateway to life. And we see the disciples, they're heavy with sorrow. They're confused, they're disappointed, they're bewildered. And what do they need in this moment? They don't need Christian values. They need Jesus himself. They had placed their, their hope in him. And hope lives because Jesus lives and Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. The resurrection was, was not the reversal of a defeat. It was the manifestation of a victory. And the resurrection means that the worst thing that can happen to you is never the final thing.
all because Jesus lives. And this means to you today that you can ask Jesus. You can ask Jesus himself to walk with you and to eat with you. Easter Sunday isn't just the center of history. It can be the center of your life too. But it's not just an historical event. It can be an everyday reality for you and for me. And not just evidence, but experience. It's the experience of, of billions of people around the world. We see that the, the risen Jesus, he appears to people in dreams, often in countries where they don't have access to Bibles. And we see that their lives are transformed because they experience Jesus himself. I remember being 11 years old on a, on a youth camp, sat around a campfire, and encountering uh, the risen Jesus for the first time. I couldn't see him with my eyes, but I knew that he was there. It was the most powerful, the most wonderful experience, and I knew his love for me, and I knew his desire that each person in this world uh, would know him and would get to experience him too. And amidst the ups and the downs of my life and all the ways that I've gone uh, off course as I've not followed uh, the true satnav. I've always come back to this moment. I've always come back to this moment of knowing Jesus himself. And Luke writes this. He says, as they, uh, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And this Easter this Easter Sunday, Jesus himself is on the road again. He is traveling. He is passing through the road of your life and my life. And can I urge you to urge Jesus to stay with you and to eat with you? Look what happens. Look what happens in verse 30. Uh, he was at the table with them. He took bread. He, he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them. It's exactly the same order, the exactly the same sequence of the way that he breaks the bread as he does at the feeding of the 5,000 and as he does at the Last Supper. And Jesus is saying, I will provide for you and I am your provision too. I want to give you what you need. And Jesus is saying, ultimately what you need is him, to, to stand in your place for where you get things wrong and to stand by your side every day of your life and through death itself. And that's what we're celebrating when in a moment uh, we receive communion as we break bread. We're saying, Jesus, would, would you make the, your death and your life the main thing about my life? Make it the center of my life. And if you make Jesus' death and resurrection the main thing about your life, then, then just like these disciples, as you eat with him, as you listen to him, as you read the scriptures, your eyes too will be opened to him. And then we see that they say in verse 32, we're not our hearts burning within us. Jesus, uh, Easter Sunday is not just about Jesus being alive. It's about you being alive, truly alive, fully alive, with your heart burning within you, with a, with a passion and a purpose to your life, greater than you can imagine. Jesus, he longs to do that for you and for me if we let him walk with us every step of the way. Hope for this life and hope beyond this life. Some of you here today, you've walked with Jesus and your heart has grown cold to Jesus Christ. And some of you here today have, have grown up in church, but you've never encountered Jesus Christ for yourself. The, the, the preacher John Wesley, uh, who saw thousands come to experience the risen Jesus Christ, he was actually ordained as a minister in the Church of England uh, before he encountered Jesus Christ. And he said, um, when it happened, he said this. He said he felt his heart 
was strangely warmed. It's a very English way of saying I felt my heart burn uh, within me. He needed an encounter. He needed an encounter with Jesus himself. And some of you are here today and all of this is new to you. And can I encourage you, can I urge you, each of you here today, all of us today, to ask Jesus to walk with you and ask him to eat with you. It's the same risen Jesus who in the book of Revelation says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. And Jesus is saying this to anyone and he's saying this to everyone. The writer Luke, who writes our gospel passage today, he's essentially saying, Luke is saying, don't be lukewarm, but be on fire, be on fire with Jesus Christ, his love in your heart because he is alive. Jesus is alive. And today he is here, he is walking among us. This Jesus, Jesus himself, who is the center of history, who is risen from the grave, and who wants to walk and to eat with you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you like to stand? Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that we see in all these encounters of meeting people after you are risen from the grave and that you meet us exactly where we are. And whether we um, have already walked with you, uh, whether we've never met you before. But Lord, we thank you that you meet us exactly where we are and that we can bring who we are and how we're doing to you. And Jesus, today we invite you to come and live with us. We are sorry for uh, all the ways that we get things wrong, all the ways in which we say that, that you're not the way, and we go off course. We ask you to live with us, to forgive us, to eat with us. And even now as we break bread, Lord, would you open our eyes? Would you open our eyes and Jesus, would you burn within our hearts? And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, as we remain standing, the words are going to come up uh, on the screen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ our Lord. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has restored to us everlasting life. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And all glory be to you, our heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. 
And he instituted, and in his holy gospel, he commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. So hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we're unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offenses and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Would you like to take a seat as we continue by praying the words that Jesus himself taught his followers to pray? So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. As we come in a moment to receive the bread and the wine, it's uh, for all who are trusting in Jesus' death and resurrection. If that is you, you are so, so welcome to take uh, the bread and the wine. There may be some here who don't want to take the bread and wine, some maybe for health reasons, uh, others maybe because you're still sort of looking in on the Christian faith. Uh, And if you don't want to take communion, I'd love to encourage you to still come forwards uh, when everyone comes forward to the nearest station to them in a moment, if you'd like to. Uh, And as you come forwards, just um, just have your hands by your side, and instead of taking the bread and wine, why not just ask the person who's distributing it just to pray a short prayer of blessing for you instead. There'll be five stations. You'll be ushered uh, to the one nearest to you. Uh, If I can encourage you just to stay in your seat uh, until an usher guides you uh, to get out of your pew and just head to the relevant station. The only exception is for those of you, if you would like non-alcoholic wine or gluten-free bread, uh, when it's your turn to get out of your seat, instead of going to the the station that you're ushered to, uh, just head round to the back and just go to the station that's just behind the glass at the back there in the foyer, and that's where uh, non-alcoholic wine and gluten-free bread will be available. When you're receiving uh, the bread and wine, you're receiving together, just put your hands out in a little cup like that, uh, and the person will um, have the bread which has been dipped in the wine, and will just drop it into your hands, and then you can take it and return to your seats. So if those who are distributing could come forwards, and uh, would you all draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
to the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the dark Shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living love. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could find?
Christ, you are our living hope. You alone are the one that we can hope in. And we worship you this Easter Sunday. Lord Jesus, on the road of our lives, may you be at the very center. May we know you walking alongside us in our lives. And Lord Jesus, this day, this day may be where some of us, we recognize that our hearts have grown lukewarm. This day where maybe some of us just are beginning to investigate who you are and what you mean. Lord Jesus, we pray that by the power of your Spirit, that our eyes might be opened afresh to you and the wonder of your love for us. Lord Jesus, we pray that by your Spirit, that our hearts might be burning within. Burning within as we look at your Scriptures. Burning within as we wonder at the truth that you are risen and alive. Lord Jesus, come and walk amongst us and work in us, we pray. And so may God give each one of you joy and peace in your faith. May he give you hope and confidence in the risen Jesus this Easter day. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. It's been so wonderful uh, to be with you on this Easter Sunday celebrating that Jesus Christ is risen and alive today. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, do please join us next Sunday if you are around and able to. Four services at 8, uh, 9.30, 11.15 or 5.30 p.m. It would be so good uh, to see you. Do join us for Alpha uh, on the 23rd of April. If you'd like to, you can book uh, for that or find more information on the website. If you've got children in a group, uh, can I encourage you, don't, remember, uh, don't forget, don't remember, uh, don't, don't forget to pick unless you want to. Um, no, I won't encourage that. Um, but on your way out, uh, for you as well as for any children, uh, there should be uh, some chocolate eggs. Um, but there are also not one, not two, not three, not four, not but five, I've been told, flavours of hot cross bun as well on your way out, if you want to grab one of those as well. But have a very happy Easter. It's been wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified.